Food prices around the world have skyrocketed an average of 57% in the past year, and the World Bank estimates that 100 million people are on the brink of poverty and hunger. This hunger crisis we're facing is totally unique because it's what I call a silent tsunami. In Senegal, thousands took to the streets over the rising price of food. And in Haiti, the capital descended into chaos as soaring food prices sent violent protesters into the streets. Seven people were killed and the prime minister was voted out of office. We risk again the specter of widespread hunger, malnutrition and social unrest on an unprecedented scale. Much of the turmoil has been sparked by the rapid upswing in the cost of commodities such as wheat and soybeans, with rice more than doubling in a year. Rice is the staple for half the world's six billion people, and shortages of this and other commodities affect not only poorer nations, but also American consumers. In the U.S., the price of flour rose 40 percent last quarter, and a dozen eggs cost 43 percent more than they did last year. I believe the anxiety felt over higher food prices is going to be just as widespread and will equal or even surpass the anger and frustration so many Americans have about higher gas prices. And those higher gas prices have boosted interest in alternative biofuels, promoted in part by U.S. government subsidies. Last year, 25 percent of all U.S. corn harvested was used to make ethanol, pushing the price of corn to historic highs. Add fertilizer shortages brought on by high oil prices, a severe drought in Australia, a cyclone in Myanmar, and speculation in commodities futures, you have the makings of a global food crisis affecting millions of people around the world.